what are eight steps that you should master before sending out your first Chrome job application? Okay, eight steps. Yes, eight steps. Hello, it's Happy Friday and welcome to the Scrum chat room with Dr. Francis Simbunya. And if you're new here, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button because we are bringing you videos that are going to educate you, guide you, give you what you need and what you're missing in order to get that scrum job not only that for those who are already in how to stay in right and those who already master how to stay in how to get to another level scrum it's about learning it's about leadership it's about how to move to the next level so i'm going to be going uh through some of the eight steps that we should know or eight things that we should do before we ever uh step in to pick in our uh, to step eight things that we should do before we even send out our application the first thing to do after you get your certification is not to start applying, All right? Uh, many people feel like, oh, let me just get an experience and I can expect what it's like and then I know what to work on. That's not the way. You need to know what to work on. You need to build that confidence first in order to get in with some level of confidence because if you don't, when you get in, you get yourself embarrassed and that might kind of really key your morale and you say, you know what, I'm done and I'm out. Okay, now, uh, before we get in, uh, before I get started, a couple of ground rules. We're starting our next safe certification class on Monday. If you're interested, just send me I'm interested and get enrolled in that uh, session to become safe Scrum Master certified. Also, you will look in the description. There are quite a lot of resources and most of the things I'm going to be going through, you can also find them in our resource section that can really help you kind of... Uh, see in the gap that you're missing you might not need all of them but i'm going to be going through all of them now what's the first thing number one number one thing that you're going to need number one thing that you're going to need is going to be a story okay now when you make up your mind to get into a scrum certification maybe you have a pharmacist background maybe you have a nursing background maybe you have a, a business background maybe you have an accounting background now the first thing is not to jump into the certification is to think about a story remember when you're getting into any fee when you're getting into any industry the first thing they want to know it's, it's not about uh oh i know how to facilitate event they want to know your story right companies want to hire people who are passionate about what they're doing so you need to imagine why am I transitioning into a scrum phase? It's just because, oh, um, it's a six figure job and I know that uh, it's easy to go and I just need to, 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 to create some more time. No, you need to figure out your story. What is your story? What is your motivation of wanting to do scrum? And even imagine, okay, if I want to do scrum, how is the transition going to be like for me? Some people never think about that until they get certified like, okay, you know what? I need a CV. What should I put in my CV? No, this should be a thought that you should, a conversation that you should have before you get into the space, which is why you need to be able to talk to someone who has a more uh, professional background to say, okay, look, this is my background. This is what I'm trying to do. What are the chances that I can succeed? You get that advice before ever enrolling. Yeah. Now, this is also where a lot of people are making a mistake that, like, oh, this is an online course, it's $500, and then you jump in, they teach Scrum for two days, and you, oh, I'm certified, now I can start a job. No. Scrum is a leadership, and in leadership, we focus, we don't just focus on uh, question and answer. We focus on emotional intelligence. We focus on your, uh, um, your business uh, intelligence, and that's why over 60% of questions you're going to be asked during your interview on Scrum are not going to be about Scrum. It's going to be a situation. How do you manage your situation? How do you manage your situation? So you need to have that thought pattern on how is it possible for me to be able to make a transition and fit in. How is it going to be like? Number one, your story. Now, when you understand now your story on what you're going to leverage, what story you're going to leverage in to make a transition, the second thing you need to do is to be able to capture that story into a resume. So if I need now to transfer this story, this story into a Scrum Master resume, what exactly would that be? Okay. Now, you want to keep story. Now, you want to capture it. So if I want to now 
uh, start practicing the Scrum Master? How am I going to use what I have? How am I going to align it? How are we going to put it together? Now, you have an idea how you're going to put it together before you go in now and take a certification. So that's the second thing you should do. Now, this is stuff that you should already kind of do the first two, right? Now, the third thing you want to do, that's when you get now your certification, is about, tell me about yourself. Now, the question, tell me about yourself, plays over 80% in the decision whether an interviewer is going to move on with you or not move on with you. If I say, okay, tell me about yourself. You say, all right, my name is Francis. I'm a servant leader. I'm a good communicator. I know how to facilitate Scrum events. And you said nothing, like completely nothing. Okay, sorry to kind of get straight, but we like to keep it real here. We like to go straight. You said nothing, right? Now, this is one trick about leadership. One of the things you must have learned about Scrum is that you're a servant leader, right? What does a servant leader do? A servant leader does not praise himself. A servant leader focuses on the achievement you're serving. So if you come and you're giving a report to your master, right? As a servant, what are you going to do? Like, oh, I'm a very good servant. Say, oh, master, I cleaned this, I did this, I completed this work, I completed this work. And the master is going to say, you're a good servant. But then, when many of us go to an interview, we're focusing on like, oh, I'm good this, I'm a good communicator, I'm a good facilitator, I know how to use events. And then when they start asking you how to use them, you freeze. It's like, okay, I thought you said you know how to. So what should you rather say? You should rather I tell them about your value. Hello, my name is this, and I have my background is in XYZ, and I work with this company as a Scrum Master, and this is the business solution we're building, and this is my team composition, and these are some of the technology tools that we're using. Now we're talking about tell me about yourself. So tell me about yourself in a most technical way, as I've reiterated over and over again, simply means that can you confirm that we are the person, you are the same person we've seen on your resume? right it's more like walk me through your resume so walk me through your resume and i see a lot of mistakes a lot of people put on their resume by starting oh i'm a servant leader i'm an adept this no that doesn't work for scrum okay i'll check on the description link it's a template for um the template for cv on what you should do I actually kind of did a video on, on the CV. I'm, I'll try to put a link to that video on how you structure your CV. The first uh, the first part, the key qualification. You list your key qualification, you list your Scrum experience, and you list a leadership quality. Then you talk about now your skills, and then talk about your certification, talk about your position, then lastly talk about your education. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's another long conversation. I can still redo another video on that for another day. So that's the third. Tell me about yourself. Very important. Now, uh, the fourth is going to be on the... Oh, I missed out one. Okay, let me say the fourth is going to be your case study. Can you tell me about your last position with B and G Bank? Can you tell me about your last position in Scrum Master? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people go this way. On my last position, I was helping my team. I work on multiple projects. I was helping my team to facilitate different events. I will help my team to coordinate dependency. That's not what I want to hear. When they say, tell me about your last position, the one say, oh, I was working as a Scrum Master in Bank of America, and my team were, were working on optimizing the DNA servers and um, security uh uh and, and optimizing security gateways for and optimize optimizing security issues for different uh portals and gateway right now <laughs> as a big technical yeah but this is how deep you need to go not oh i was facilitating everybody knows that scrum master is a facilitator you want to say something unique i was working with a team of developers and we're building this application and we're migrating data from Postgres to Dynamo. And we were building an application interface that could help uh, uh, the communication between different portals. And one of the main tools that we're using was, was uh, uh, one of the main tools or main software we're using was, was Event Hub 
or ITO hub, you need to learn a bit of technical knowledge. Then we are now having a conversation. Okay, so a case study doesn't talk like, oh, I work with this, I pass this date, even a remove impediment, that doesn't work. Before, maybe it will work, but now it's getting technical. Now, they see so many uh, Scrum job in the market. The, 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 the challenge we're having is that um, people are not getting that technical. They're not, not technical, we're not getting known exactly what they need to get them. And that's, we have a coaching program. If you want to be part of our coaching program and get more of these details, we're just giving you high level on YouTube. Uh, kind of reach out to me and say, oh, I want to be part of your coaching program. It's definitely not free, definitely not cheap for those who want it and want it the hard way, right? You want it or you, you want it or you want it. It's not like, oh, I have options. No, it's for those who want it and they want it. Now, after that, the next thing you need to do is to practice your Scrum event. Understand Scrum in practice. There, there's definitely not going to be any chance for me interviewing you about Scrum and you cannot effectively tell me how you would do spring planning, effectively tell me how you're going to split stories, effectively tell me how, what do you, how do you know that this story is big and I need to split that, effectively tell me how you run retrospective with your team, effectively tell me who should be part of your review and how do you get them in. If that is missing, then uh, a whole lot is missing. Now, they can kind of pardon you if you kind of not really master uh, a situational questions because it's situational. It might be that you have not gone through that. But if you don't understand the basics of facilitating events and the step-by-step -step and what events you come first, your calendar, who, uh, when do you schedule this event, how long does each event take, you definitely should get back to the drawing board. All right, perfect. When you understand your Scrum event, now the next thing you want to do, we're still talking about the things you should do before you start applying. Set up your LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile needs to be professional. Now, before you get to your LinkedIn profile, now the companies you're going to put on your resume, this one thing that's very prominent now, recruiters are actually searching those companies online to see if it's capable of hosting a Scrum project. So don't just go put uh, maybe one uh, LLC that created doesn't even have a website and nothing and you say, oh, I worked as a Scrum Master. That's not reality, right? And that's even one of the reasons why uh, you probably might not be getting any call. Your, co your company need to be able to, we need to make sure that it exists, it's reflecting online. And so you might ask me another question. Oh, what if I'm not work in this company? How do I kind of uh, uh, put the company that, okay, that's a, that's a back of the room question, right? That's a back of the room questions to understand exactly uh, how to navigate or how you translate your previous experience to actually scale through the process. Okay, now we'll go on the, you, I said you need to set up your profile. You need to set up your uh, LinkedIn profile, make sure it's professional, advice, you use DICE. You can also go on for LinkedIn Premium. LinkedIn Premium help you to kind of really get first into application. You can even write to the recruiter directly. Uh, so LinkedIn Premium, I advise you to go for that. DICE, I advise you to go for that. And then one other stuff, is that when you get all of this set up, you can now start your application, right? You can now start applying for your job. So this one, you kind of need a definition of ready. Definition of ready, which means that if you have not gone through all of this uh, different aspect that I've discussed, I will advise you don't start applying. You're not ready yet. And when you get in there, even within your first interview, you're not gonna, you're not gonna make it. Right, except you have been in this space before, you understand exactly what's going on. If not, you need to make sure that you're going through all of this before your first interview. Okay, and the definition of ready, if you don't master any of this, it means you need coaching, right? It means you need to reach out to one of those coaches out there. I'm not the only coach, I'm just one of those. So you make your choice who you want to go through. Uh, check out the link below, there are quite a lot of resources that can help you get ahead of... Uh, that application and also if you want if you're already in the job market and you need just coaching we also provide that as well and if you don't have the money to pay for coaching you just need a particular document reviewing your resume or reviewing uh, 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 um, your application process you can also just book an hour and we can walk you through what you need okay i'll see you in the next video have a great weekend